Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, uh, back with some more Ace Attorney, Case 5, Rise from the Ashes. Uh, I just noticed that this screen says select a save data to load. Data is plural, so it should say select a save datum to load, or select save data to load. So I'm annoyed. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, we're starting day two investigation now, so let's, uh, let's do this thing. Um, and I haven't really been doing intros in these videos, I've just sort of gone straight into it, so I thought I might mix things up a bit. Bit of an intro. Anyway, let's go. February 23rd, 2.15pm, Wright & Co. Law Offices. Uh, um, Mr. Wright, so... What's going on with the case, anyway? I... I'm a little confused. Huh? Well, uh, let's see. What is going on? The victim, Detective Bruce Goodman, was stabbed to death after 5pm on the 21st. He died in the prosecutor's parking lot and the police department's evidence room. What's this and the evidence room part? The prosecutor's office and the police department are 30 minutes apart by car. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Or we'll try to, at least. Alright, let's do it. Glad she's in good spirits. I'm not sure she's going to be much help with this. Don't be so sure, Mr. Wright. Huh? Look, we're in this together, right? I'll prove that these thick rim glasses of mine aren't just for show. Let's go! Science awaits us! I love her so much. <laughs> February 23rd, Prosecutor's Office, Underground Parking Lot. Okay, so we're about to do another thing that uses the touch screen normally, so it'll be interesting to see how this works on the Switch. You know, I really don't think we should worry about the police department murder. There wasn't even a body found there, who cares? Yeah, it was only our victim was killed in the- it was only our victim who was killed in the evidence room. No biggie. Besides, my sister would never do such a thing. I know it. That oil drum. Was it empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. My sister, erasing evidence at the crime scene? Never. Even though she says they don't get along, Ema really likes her sister. That's not it at all. It's just... Those professionals what we do, and I trust her. And big words for a high school student. Well, whether there was blood on the floor or not, the water in that oil drum washed it all away. <laughs> That's an interesting way to spell that. Like, he he ha. He he ha. <laughs> I don't know. Ignore the strength of my science at your own peril, Mr. Wright. Huh? What's that grin for? This situation calls for one thing, and that is luminol testing fluid. L luminol? Blood is sticky stuff, you know. You can't just wash it away with a little water. Even if you can't see it, it's still there. But wouldn't the police have already done those tests? Never trust anyone's eyes but your own, Mr. Wright. Just give it a try. M me Why do I have to do it? I'm a miner. I can't even drink yet. We're testing bloodstains with this stuff, not drinking it. <laughs> it's your- it's your luminol fluid, like, come on. <laughs> Here, look, I'll lend you these glasses. Huh? You had an extra pair of those things? Oh, it skipped the line. She said something about spraying, but it skipped ahead. That's weird. Like this, see? Press the A button to spray it on. Okay, let's find us some blood stains. Okay, so instead of using a touch screen, I just have a little cursor I can move around on the screen. I'm guessing if I were playing handheld, I could use the touch screen, but I'm not, because I can't record that way. Okay, so there's some blood. I can see her eyes shining behind those glasses. 
So, is this a blood stain? Ugh, it's so... Ugh. Ema, you're shaking. It's just... This is my first time seeing real blood. Oh, baby. Scientific investigation in action. Okay, well, we definitely know that this is a blood stain. But doesn't something strike you as odd? Scientifically speaking, of course. What's odd about this, scientifically? Well, there isn't very much blood. Um, the location makes sense if there was a stabbing here, but there should be more blood. The perpetrator and Detective Goodman... Ugh, and Detective Goodman fought here, right? Don't you think there'd be a little more blood? I definitely think so. I mean... Look at all the blood on the sole of the victim's shoe. It is pretty strange. Actually, wait. Didn't Ema look at the shoe yes, like earlier today? She's already seen real blood before. It was on the shoe. <laughs> Babe. <laughs> if they fought here, there have to have been more blood than this. Uh, uh, hey, Mr. Wright. I'm gonna mark up the floor plans when we find a blood stain, okay? See? I'm pretty handy to have around, right? Um, yeah, and this stuff's pretty handy too. I saved up my allowance to buy that. Luminol testing fluid received from one very proud looking Ema Sky. Oh, baby. I love her so much. We can't be sure that the police will reveal all their evidence in court. Sometimes they fail to mention evidence that doesn't fit with their view of the case. Hey, cab. <laughs> Then let's drag that hidden evidence out into the light of day. Yeah! Feels like we're really investigating a crime now, doesn't it? I guess I should give this a spray on anything suspicious. I don't know whose voice this is. Um, aha! <laughs> I don't know who's talking. Oh, okay, it's you. I wonder how that fluid of yours would react to a nice deli box. Mister! You only trust your own eyes, hmm? Not bad, you two. I've forgotten what voice I gave her, I hope this is right. This day old deli box is on the house. Sorry, it's just that kind of lady doesn't really get my mouth watering. Okay, so what we actually want to reuse this luminal fluid. Uh, we can spray it pretty much anywhere. You can see there's an X button to spray. Uh, so we're gonna spray around a bit and see what else we can find here. There is another spot here somewhere that has some blood on it. Also, wow, that flashing screen on this really big monitor, that's not good. Um, I should have given a photosensitivity warning at the start of the video. Uh, I might put one in the description if I, if I can remember. Um, because, geez. This blood must be from when Lana... No! My sister isn't the murderer! But she did call you, didn't she? At the time of the crime? And her right hand is bandaged. Hey! Just whose side are you on? It has nothing to do with taking sides. So, this means that Lana's hand had blood on it. And this just keeps getting worse. I think there was something else around that had some blood on it, but I forget what. might have been everything, actually. Um, you can't run out of luminol no matter how much you waste, so that's not something to worry about. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk to Angel. He certainly put me in a tight spot today. My apologies, Miss Star, but... No, no, it's okay. It's my fault. Oh, we know. I witnessed everything from that security room right there. But I was afraid that wouldn't sound convincing enough. I was wrong to think that. I'm sorry. Sorry? You lied on the witness stand. It's unforgivable. Little girl, don't forget what's important here. Even if the place I witnessed the events from was different, I still saw what I saw. I saw Chief Prosecutor Sky stab a man in cold blood, and that testimony still stands. Ah. 
I swear it on my honor as a detective. She stabbed Goodman. You know this photograph has something important to tell us. But what? So, you were a detective, weren't you, mister? Yes. It was a long time ago. Well, two years ago. No matter how hardened the criminal, when they faced me... They coughed it up. Coughed it... up? They confessed. They babbled like babies. You know... It may seem like a demon sometimes, but I can be an angel too. Oh, babe. She's so cute. I wouldn't doubt it. Every day I drag the dirt out of the mouths of suspect after suspect. And before long, they called me... The cough-up queen. Oh, we I thought someone had gotten food poisoning from your lunches. And you were... let go? The... fired? Felt that I found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if these prim and proper prosecutors hadn't let me go, I'd still be one today. It's all because of that case. The SL9 incident. SL9? Wait, she doesn't mean... Okay, we do want to show her a couple of things. So the SL9 incident is one of them. We also want to ask her about this photograph. Think about it. I could have taken that picture from the guard room. But even I get flustered sometimes. Oh, baby. So you went straight to the scene of the crime? Rushed toward the chain link fence in an effort to stop the murder. That's when I took this photo, yes. In other words, five minutes after the crime? Those five minutes are the whole problem. A hole in my testimony, as it were. Five minutes weren't the problem, Miss Star. You lying was the problem. Listen, little girl. I've had my testimony disregarded before. And I wasn't going to have it disregarded again. Just like that time. That time? So yeah, we need to ask her about the SL9 incident. So, uh, I'm gonna show her this bit of paper. Um, what do you think about this? The SL9 incident. It's written on that knife. And on that note. Goodman. Goodman was the head detective on that case, you know? Really? That knife was evidence from that case, the murder weapon. It was due for transfer on the very day the good man was killed. As I suspected, SL9 isn't over. Not yet. If you could tell us more about the SL9 incident? So yeah, um, basically they've lifted the whole here's an old case that happened that we have to figure out to make this case make sense thing from the previous case we just played, uh, Turn About Memories, except it's SL9 instead of DL6. Um, <laughs> again with the whole suspiciously similar substitute thing. It's good, but, you know, it's very similar. That incident really opened my eyes to the truth. We're nothing to them. Disposable. Disposable? To who? Ema, it's whom? To whom? Huh. <sighs> Two years ago, it was the biggest case I'd ever handled. The police and the prosecutors were desperate for decisive evidence. So, they didn't solve it? On the contrary, it was solved quite cleanly. The criminal was caught and executed. And executed? Yes, the criminal got what was coming to him. Doesn't get any cleaner than that. The only problem was, they never did find decisive evidence. Not a shred. What? But the criminal was executed, right? On the basis of evidence. All the sort. We made up evidence. What? You mean they executed someone with fabricated evidence? The best part came several months after the trial. Every detective involved with the case was dealt with. Some were demoted to patrolmen, others found themselves out of a job. 
and you were one of those? Myself, and one other person you know well. Wait, could it be... Exactly. Detective Jake Marshall. Oops, I mean, Police Department Security Detail Officer Jake Marshall. As professional detectives, we investigated that case from every angle. Jake was particularly determined. And then, it was over, and he was demoted. However, he hasn't forgotten, and neither have I. You haven't forgotten SL9? There was another side to that case, the hidden side. That's what we're after now. And no one up in their fancy offices can stop us. Wait! It's those lunches you sell. There's only one reason I come to sell lunches in this accursed office. I come here to meet old friends. Boyfriends that can help me investigate. Miss Star's old boyfriends. How many does she have anyway? Just when all the detectives in SL9 have disappeared, we find new evidence. There has to be a connection. So, Rookie. W what? Seems like you're serious about investigating this case. Yes. Then you should take this. Uh, Salisbury Steak Lunch? I know a certain guy who might help you if you tempt him with this treat. Steak Lunch received from Ms. Star. Um, yeah, we have to give it to Officer Marshall. I don't know why it tells us that in the description, instead of letting us figure it out based on what she said, but whatever. Um, Ms. Star? Officer Marshall, is he your, uh, are you his? Are you g g going out? <laughs> oh, babe. <laughs> he was so cute. Why do you want to know? I was just wondering what happened to him. A long time ago, when he was helping my sister do cases, he was so nice. He got along so well with my sister, it, it made me jealous. And he was nice to me too back then. This would be when Officer Marshall was a detective. But now, now it's so cold. Jake and I are merely cooperating on this investigation. We're putting the past to rest, as it were. Nothing more than that. I, I see. Thank you, Officer Jake Marshall. Hmm. All right, so we're done talking here. So uh, we want to go find Jake. I believe he's at the police department. February 23rd, Police Department, Entrance. It's even busier here today than it was yesterday. Detectives are running around so fast they're blurring. I suppose it makes sense, a detective did get killed here after all. So, the evidence room, the scene of the crime. According to the pamphlet we got at the front desk, here it is. Just like a kid in an amusement park. Oh, a real crime scene! Let's go take a look! Babe, you already went to a real crime scene. We just came from a real crime scene. <laughs> Sweetie. <laughs> She's so cute. February 23rd, evidence room entrance. Guard station. What's with the decor in this place? It's very... eccentric. According to the pamphlet, this is the guard station for the evidence room. So beyond that door is the evidence room, the scene of the crime? It sure seems that way. Oh, oh. What's wrong? It's those cacti, they're so prickly, so imposing, it's hard to think straight. You can't handle the cacti, stay out of the desert. What I want to know is, if this is a guard station, where is the guard? I have a feeling I know who he is already. So, um... Yeah, the guard's not here, and I think we all know who he is already. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can't actually get into the evidence room yet. The evidence room is beyond that door. Let's just walk in! Won't open. You thought it'd be open? I think we need someone's permission to go in there first. Yeah, we can't get into the evidence room until we have permission to go in. So we have to get that. February 23rd, Police Department. Entrance. 
This place is charged with frantic energy, as always. I forget who this is. Uh, someone's saying please. Uh, please! <laughs> huh? Wasn't that... Oh, it's Gumshoe. One steak lunch, please. Oh, it's you. Detective Gumshoe. Now's no time for chit-chat, pal. I'm a busy man. What I really need is a steak lunch from Lunchland. Well, I have a steak lunch. I could give it to you. Oh, you mean one of these? Actually, it's not for sale. I think I just heard the sound of his heart breaking. Now's no time for despair. We've caught our criminal. Now we just need evidence. The, the criminal? You mean... You heard about the stabbing in the police department evidence room, right, pal? On the same day the detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department? And the perpetrator? Do you have a, sus do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect. Just arrested him, in fact. It's the biggest scandal to hit the station in ages. Everything is topsy-turvy. But, Detective Gumshoe, who was it? Listen, pal, all I know is I need me a steak lunch, pronto. Standing around here talking isn't gonna fill my belly. Wait, don't leave. If you wanna know more, head on down to the detention center, pal. Questioning should be over, so I figure he's down there having a good cry. Later. He went off to the evidence room. Well, this investigation's off to a running start. Okay, so yeah, we want to go to the detention centre now. Uh, there's lots of wandering around in, in this investigation, unfortunately. February 23rd, detention centre. Visitor's room. Still, I do feel better about things. A little. I mean, they caught the person who stabbed Detective Goodman, didn't they? Um, uh, yeah, I guess they did. Best to not go too far down that road right now. Things will just get confusing. <laughs> what was that? Sir, that's what I'm saying. Me, a perpetrator? I'd say I was the perpetrator again, sir. That's what I'd say. It's Officer Megan. Ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, uh, hi, greetings, sir. Wait, I know who you are. Hey, excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm here, sir, at the quest of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Officer Meekins, so you're a guard here at the detention center? No, sir, I'm not, sir. I'm a lost patrolman, like a lost lamb, sir. Oh, I get it. You're here to deliver a report. Uh, no, sir, I, uh, how should I say this? Wait, he isn't... is he? You... Officer Meekins, you didn't... did you? Uh... Perpetrator Officer Meekins reporting, sir! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> now this is an unexpected turn of events. Sir, I'm a patrolman with general affairs, sir. Sir! Ow. I can hear you fine, Officer Meekins. I had some business that day, sir, and so I went to the evidence room, sir. The guard station in front of the room was empty, sir. So, normally there's a guard at the ev no, normally there's a guard at the evidence room? That's right, sir. Because evidence is kept in the evidence room, sir. <laughs> now, the security officer was none other than Officer Marshall. M Marshall? Well, we already knew that. Then, sir, I happened to glance at the security room monitor. That's when I saw him, sir. A suspicious person in the evidence room. A suspicious person, sir. A suspicious person. Yeah, wow, 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 wow. What the heck is this guy doing? So what happened then? After that, sir, I, I, everything went white. I saw red. I blacked out. And when I came to, I was here. In the detention center. How long were you out? Days? Um, when I ask, what happened to your hand? 
Sir, there was no one to bandage me, sir. So I did what I could to wrap it up, sir. A bandage on his hand. Just like Miss Sky. There's another similarity between this case and the one at the prosecutor's office. First things first. Tell us how you hurt your hand. Um, I don't mean to pry, but you are the perpetrator, correct? You killed Detective Bruce Goodman in the evidence room, right? Sir, please don't look at me with those sad puppy dog eyes, sir. You have to label me as perpetrator or victim, sir. Then label me victim. Um, I would, but you happen to be in detention. And alive and well at that. Uh, yes, well, that's true, sir. I suppose you could say that. Did you know the victim, Detective Goodman? Well, sir, if I had to label him, as a label him as a stranger or a total stranger, then I'd say he leans heavily on the total stranger side. Stranger things. <laughs> so you didn't know him? Sir, I work in a tiny department devoid of light or other creature comforts. I don't know any detectives. So, if he was a total stranger, why did you stab him? Sir, I had no intention of killing him, sir. None! Nor do I have any recollection of killing him, sir. Oh, sweetie. At least someone around here is more confused than I am. About your hand, did that happen during the course of the crime? Well, you see, sir, I, uh... Don't you think you should just confess? But, sir, sir, but there was nothing I could do. Nothing you could do? Sir, tell the truth, sir. What, when it happened, when the detective pointed that knife at me, I just hollered, sir. And the next thing I knew, I was unconscious. The next thing you knew, you were... Uh-huh. Then, when I opened my eyes, I was alone in the evidence room, sir. All alone. Alone because because Detective Goodman had disappeared. What? Then when I looked down, I was gushing blood from my hand, sir. Oh, the shock! Oh, the sorrow, sir! Can you imagine how I felt? The victim's body disappeared. Hmm, that's some story. Okay, uh, I've got a couple of clues here to work with. Uh, I think this ID card is relevant. Um, do you think you could take a look at this? Hey! That's it, sir! That's it! That's it! That's what? My head was a blank until this very moment. But, sir, now I remember. I remember, sir! You mean you remember what happened? Meekin sounds a lot like Marcy from Peanuts. <laughs> Correct, that card, that card was the cause of it all. This... ID card? Exactly, sir, that's exactly it. Nothing could be more exact, sir. Nothing! I'd better pry into this one a little deeper. I detailed. Can you tell me what it, what it is you do remember? Well, sir, you might say I'm a little lost patrolman. A little lost little lamb, if you will. Sorry, lost little patrolman, I lost the line as well. I didn't know Mr. Detective Goodman, who was in the evidence room. And that's why you thought he looked suspicious. Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to show me his ID card. Well, that sounds pretty much by the book so far. That's right, sir! That's what I've been trying to tell you! So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing! Suddenly he pointed a knife at me! What? Sir, I'm sure you're as flustered as you are right now. So I whooped and leapt at him! Detective Goodwin pointed a knife at him? Do unto others before they do unto you! My father's, my own father's words, sir. Well, what happened then? Well, my eyes, sir, everything went white. When I awoke, I was here. Right. So, Officer Meekins, why was it that they arrested you? What do you mean, Emma? Let's look at what we know. 
Now, Officer Meekins didn't know Detective Goodman, and the victim, whom he met at the scene of the crime, didn't show his ID card. I think she got whom and who backwards. That should be who he met. I'm pretty sure. Because the victim is the subject of the sentence. In other words, we have no way of knowing if the victim was really the victim. And if this body just disappeared from the evidence room, we don't even know if anyone actually died. That's it, sir. That, that's what I wanted to say. That is, I did say something along those lines. Huh? That you still ended up here? They told me that it had to be him, sir. On that day, at that time, Detective Goodman was definitely in the evidence room. That's what they said. But you don't remember the events clearly? No, but the videotape is quite clear. Huh? Videotape? From the security camera. The crime, my crime, the crime I swore to stamp out. It's there, it's me, it's on tape. And you waited until now to tell us this. I'm sorry, really sorry, sir. I'll hand over my badge. I don't deserve it. No thanks, I have my own. Well, guess we better go check out the crime scene. Okay, so we do need to get that videotape, and hopefully you all enjoy watching it, because we will be watching it quite a bit. <laughs> uh, but not just yet. Uh, once we get our hands on it, we will be watching it quite a bit. Um, well, we're at the guard station. Um... I still can't get in here. Um... There's a light blinking below the monitor. It says, recording. I bet we could use this computer to check on who went out in and out of there. Okay. I expected, um, someone to be there when I went back. I guess I'll check a few other places. Um, criminal affairs? February 23rd, police station, criminal affairs dept. Hey, Mr. Wright, look who's standing at the chief of detectives desk. It's police chief Gant. And you're sure this is all, hmm? You know what it means if there's anything missing. Sir, I'm sure it's most likely totally perfect. We checked all of his drawers. Lockers, garbage cans, bags, coat pockets, hats. Under his seat cushion, behind his computer monitor, inside his personal coffee machine. I see. Well, if anything does turn up, you call me right away, deal? Y yes sir! We'll scour the place again, sir. Chief Detective looks a little flustered. Ah, uh -huh, righto, my boy. How you been? Swim much? Oh, Chief Gant, reporting for duty, sir. Why are you saluting him, Mr. Wright? Okay, so we're going to talk to Chief Gant, so let's get going. Um, is Edgeworth going to be okay? Oh, worthy? Oh, you know, they're doing a little inquiry committee with him. Sounds like an inquisition. Yep, well, I've had no end of trouble with the boy since last year. You mean, the incident on Gord Lake? It doesn't look good having a top prosecutor sit in the defendant's seat, does it? And you! You got someone else found guilty in that case, right, righto? Von Karma. Legend he was, undefeated in his 40-year career. But in court you fixed it so he was caught forging evidence. No, that's that's not what happened. He, he was caught for ha having a bullet in his shoulder. What, what are you talking about? Wait, I didn't do anything wrong. He did forge evidence. I mean, he, he probably did, but... He was caught for committing murder. What, what are you all talking about? <laughs> in any case, the prosecutor's office is in a bit of turmoil, you might say. Why, they do just about anything to restore their reputation. Now, depending on what the inquiry committee decides, it could be bad for Worthy. What? It's downright odd, I tell ya. The detective getting killed on their turf, too, I mean. They're being the prosecutors, I assume? Scientifically speaking, it's impossible. 
Yes, but that's what the evidence is saying. Goodman was stabbed in two locations at the same time. That's what it says. What evidence is this? No, no, Rido, I can't give away all our secrets just like that. And um, this in particular, well, it's a little sensitive and I can't talk about it. I wasn't expecting much anyway. You know, one thing I hate most of all is hiding stuff. Secrets. Can't stand them. But you know, it's a full-time job just keeping the Chief of Detectives trap shut. Oh, he was the one you were picking on earlier. Huh? You saw that? Whoops. I wonder what it was that he wanted the Chief of Detectives to do. Let's see if we can kind of discreetly ask him. Oh, we can actually. Uh, we need to talk to the Chief of Detectives, who is this fellow back here with the glasses. Oh, sorry you had to say that. Uh, what exactly does the Chief of Police want you to do? Well, see over there? That's Goodman's desk. You wanted me to check up anything that might be a clue. They took away every last piece of garbage in the trash can. So, nothing belonging to Detective Goodman is still here? Of course not. Well, except for this. What? You kept something? Sure, why not? It's not important. You didn't even finish writing it. It's a lost item report, but it's only half complete. A lost item? Did Detective Goodman lose something? The date on it is February 21. Better make a note of that just in case. Goodman's lost item report added to the court record. We should really get back to investigating the police department crime scene. Okay, so we needed that. Uh, so now we're going to ask Gant to let us into the crime scene so we can actually have a look at it. Actually, I was wondering if I'd ask you a favour. Hmm? Well, I never thought the day would come when Rido asked me for help. I was wondering if we could investigate the evidence room. Now, Rido. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I don't need to investigate after all. Rido, please, do I look like a selfish man? Huh? Heck, if you didn't ask me, sir, can I borrow $50? I'd give them $50, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's content. Knock yourself out. It just goes to show, you never know until you ask. And for you, here, you can borrow this. Huh, hey, this is a detective's ID card, isn't it? That's a special card for guests, so don't lose it. Y yes, sir, it's an honor. You just run along and do your best now. Later, folks. All right, so we can get into the evidence room now, which is good because we need to investigate. <laughs> it looks pretty cool on my lapel, doesn't it? Just think, a real ID. You seem happy. Yes, sir, because, sir, we get to go in the evidence room now, sir. <laughs> I think this place is a bad influence on the girl. A cab. <laughs> So yeah, I have to go to the evidence room now, um, because we have the ability to unlock it. Uh, let's move our little little magnifying glass over here. The evidence room is beyond that door. And we have the ID card from Chief Gant. Let's just walk in. It won't open. Aha! The card reader is turned off, see? What is that security guard thinking? Howdy, partners. Well, well, what's made my Bean of Scars so grey? Detective Marshall. Or Officer Marshall. Uh, Officer Marshall! Why does it have to be him? What's that why does it have to be him look for? As you may have surmised, this here is my saloon. Um, we're here to investigate the crime scene. Yeehaw! That card you got there on your chest. That's better than a sheriff's badge in these parts. Ye ho Well, what you standing there for? Get along, little doggies. The crime scene's awaiting. Beep. Looks like the card raid is on again. While we're here, I was wondering if we could ask you some questions. Sorry, cowboy, but I got no mind to tangle with you, hombres. You're busy then? Did I say that? I only said I didn't wish to speak with you. Actually, you said you had no mind to tangle with us hombres. Uh, we do want to talk with him, so we might have to give him a uh, steak lunch or something. 
Um, I was wondering if we could talk to you. Sorry, Bambino. But I'm off to roam the lands like a tumbleweed on the wide prairie. Like a gunslinger loading his six shooter, I say a little prayer. Rock. What was that all about, Mr. Wright? I think he was just too hungry to talk. He was saying that because his stomach was growling. Oh, that was his stomach. Okay. <laughs> He just made that noise. <laughs> you have no idea what he was talking about either. Well, in any case, we need to get cracked on this investigation. Pronto. Alright, so, yeah, we have to give him some lunch, and then he'll help us out. Let's have a look at lunch first. Oh, look at that delicious, delicious, um, pixelated, blocky lunch there. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look, oh, yeah, look at that artifacting. Oh, that's, that's what I like. <laughs> Delicious. Okay, yeah, let's give it to him now. <laughs> that smell. Ah, oh, reminds me of Texas. So, so Officer Marshall, you're from Texas? No, I just saw a special on television the other day. Is this from my baby? Uh, yeah, Miss Star. What's this? What? What's wrong? I feel it. Fillet or fillet? Fillet steak lunch. I see. I see. I don't see. I wonder what it means. Steak lunch given to Officer Marshall. Alright, Bambina. You win. Ask anything. <laughs> Finally, it seems like he's willing to talk. Wow. They finished each other's sentences. It's a little weird. Officer Marshall, you're in charge of security for the evidence room, right? You got good eyes, partner. It's an easy job, but I'm grateful for it. Actually, Officer Meekins at the detention center told us. Ah, uh, that poor little doggy. Poor guy. I keep getting his name wrong, calling him Meekly. He told us something. He said that when the stabbing occurred, you weren't at your station. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this. But since I got demoted from detective two years ago... Well, it might not look it, but I lost my fire for the job, you know? So, what were you doing around 5.15 when the murder took place? Well... I reckon I was galloping down the highway on the back of my steed, Zippy. No, he was riding down the highway on his horse named Zippy. There's no need for people here, anyhow. These newfangled machines do a bang-up job of keeping an eye on the place. You mean the security camera system? I don't take to machines much. Kind of like that stewed broccoli they sneak in next to your steak, you know? Star told us something. She said that you were a detective until two years ago. It was always my dream to be a rawhide wrangler on the scene of the crime. That's all gone now, like a drinking hole in a prairie fire. You're still investing in the SL9 incident with Miss Star, aren't you? That was my case. It's all sold in the record books, but it smells like a bad game of poker. I can't let it go. That's all there is to it. What kind of case was it anyway? We've heard the name so many times, but no one tells us what actually happened. There are some things you better not not know in Bambino. Anyway, that case is officially dead as of two days ago. Two days ago? The day of our case. That's right. The evidence transferals. Edgeworth was talking about the transferals too. It's interesting, they have this evidence transferal thing. It's the same thing as the Statue of Limitations on DL6, but it happens after two years instead of 15. It's questionable. <laughs> I know what maybe two of the machines in here do. Only two of them? There must be a dozen. Like I said, Bambina, me and machines, well, I like them about as much as I like stewed cauliflower with my steaks. Getting the impression he doesn't like vegetables. 
easiest ones to understand are these here security cameras. Those are the ones that Officer Makins mentioned. If nothing happens, the tapes are automatically erased every few hours. And Officer Makins, Detective Goodman, are they on one of those tapes? I reckon they might be. You're the security guard, you reckon? One more thing. When you go into the evidence room, you need an ID card. That's the card reader by the door. The card reader leaves a record of every ID card that passes through. So this is the ID card record. Hey, I've seen that somewhere before. Sorry, Bambina. I can't show you more than that. Huh? I haven't heard whether this is related to the case yet. Mr. Wright, I saw a number on that record just now. I've seen that number before. Maybe there's some way I can prove that record is tied to the stabbing. Uh, we can actually, because one of the numbers on there is, is Goodwin's number. Uh, you know, this one. 584-2189. Sorry, but could you explain what this whole transferal thing is about? We keep only evidence from solved cases in this room. They kept here under the presiding detective supervision for two years. So we can reinvestigate them if it turns out there was a mistake, see? So, what happens to the evidence after two years? He goes to sleep forever in the underground vault at the county sheriff's department. That's what we call transferal. We do it every February. I see now. Transferal is like a funeral for old cases. Two years after a case is solved, it's closed forever. Dead. Never to be reopened again. Never to be reinvestigated. And that happened to SL9 two days ago. So, yeah, it's the same thing as the statute of limitations on DL6 expiring. Because this is basically the same case as the previous one. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we need to show this ID card. See this? This is the victim's ID card. Ah, the one that was on the ground in the parking lot? The number on this is... 584-2189. Officer Marshall, show us that ID card record again. Look, the fourth number, it's a perfect match. He was used at 514, right before the stabbing. What's more, it's only one of them cards in the world. So when the incident occurred, Detective Goodman was in the evidence room. But, wait, what did Officer Meekin say? Sir, into the evidence room and ask the man to display his ID card. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing, suddenly he pointed a knife at me! If he had his ID card then, why would he have pointed a knife at Officer Meekin? Alright, compadre, you win. I guess I can give you this ID card record. ID card record to the court record. I've got an idea. Maybe I should show this list to other people with IDs here? So yeah, we do want to find out who owns some of these other IDs. Uh, to do that, we're going to be showing this list to some other people. Uh, I think if we show it to Marshall himself, he might have one. Sheriffs back in the Wild West didn't place much faith in evidence. About the only thing they trusted was their shooting hand. Um, this is neither Wild nor West here. Aha! Uh -huh. But that and this are two different things entirely! I... guess so? Huh? I'm lost. Let's so we need some evidence to get anywhere with this guy. Alright, so we're just gonna head into the evidence room now. February 23rd, Evidence Room, Sector 3. It's quiet. The investigation must be over here. The oh, it must be over here. Oops, I misunderstood. <laughs> so this is the Evidence Room. It really is kind of like a graveyard. Graveyards are supposed to have grass and trees. This feels more like a morgue. Nice try, Mr. Wright. You can't scare me. Oh, sweetie. Eek! Whoa! Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. 
I wouldn't recommend going around smacking ghosts on the head, pal. So, is it true what I heard? Righto, please, do I look like a selfish man? Heck, if anyone asks me, sir, can I borrow $50? I give them $50, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's desire, knock yourself out. Yeah, it's true. So, Chief of Police Scout will loan anyone 50 bucks? Even me? <laughs> oh, so that's what you were talking about. Actually, I was put in charge of investigation for today. Just for today? Boss for a day. But guess what? Got permission from the Chief, so now you're boss for a day. Gee, thanks. First of all, you want to have this. We got floor plans. Uh, a couple of things we want to do in here. If we have a look around, you can see there's various things we want to have a look at, such as this glove. Someone left a glove here, but only one. Jacob Gumshoe, maybe? There you go, pal, making me act for some kind of absent-minded detective. That's evidence from the case, you know? You mean SL9? It does have a tag on it. Rubber glove, I for a record. <laughs> Look, this one's open, and a red indicator light above the door is lit. That locker is coded with Detective Goodman's fingerprint. Detective Goodman's locker. Are you sure it's okay to leave it open like that? Well, it'd be hard to get it open again if we closed it. It's empty. They must have taken the contents elsewhere. Wow, someone must have broken something big to make all these pieces. Gumshoe, perhaps? There you go, there you go, pal, making me act for some kind of hooligan. That's apparently from the case. The case? Yes, I'm lying to them, pal. See the sticker on one of the pieces there? Another piece of SL9 evidence. I wonder what shape these pieces were in before whatever it was broke. You want to try to put it back together? Huh, good luck, pal. That's no job for amateurs. I spent a good three hours on that before I had to give up. That's why I always carry around a tube of glue. Well, this piece looks like the bottom. Let's try putting the rest in place. This was another one of the little uh, touchscreen based puzzle thingies you could enjoy. Uh, it's better in this version because all the pieces are visible on screen at once, rather than being able to only see one at a time like in the original version. Um, Jagged. Uh, it might be this one. There we go. And the base turns a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a little jigsaw puzzle sort of thing. It's kind of gimmicky, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's fun. pieces are missing. Yeah, I got that far, far too in two minutes myself. The problem is finishing it. 
Were some pieces stolen? But they were missing to begin with. Still. It doesn't look like the most stable kind of jar. I can't understand how it got broken. Unstable jar out of the court record. That is a very important piece of evidence. You'll see why short in a not shortly, in a while, you'll see why it's an important piece of evidence. What's this blood? It's a little worn, but there's definitely a handprint here. Looks like someone tried to wipe it off. Mr. Wright! What is there about other blood stains left in the room? We should use a testing fluid to check it out. Let's get some luminol. Spray it everywhere in this room contaminate the scene with blood. That must have been one massive pool of blood. Must have been one massive pool of blood. I haven't seen anything like it. I'm not a professional. What's your opinion, detective? Hmm. Pale blue blood. Maybe Detective Goodman was actually an alien? <laughs> This proves that something really happened in front of this locker. I'm making note of it on the floor plans. Hey, if you want my opinion, you shouldn't have asked. Here's a hand print. Let's have a look at it. I knew it! This is someone's right hand print. What? What's the matter, detective? This locker. It's mine! It's yours? Please! You have to help me when they come to take me away. I promise you'll testify that I wouldn't harm a fly. You'll do that for me, won't you, pals? This is an important clue. I'll jot it down on the floor plan. I'm counting on you guys. Believe me, you can't trust the police. A cab! <laughs> what? But you're a detective! reason for the murderer to touch this spot if you fled out the door. This just might be something significant. Hey, that's some pretty amazing stuff you got there, pal. What, this? It's called luminol testing fluid. Where'd you get your hands on that? Huh? I'd like to get some too. I'll just borrow 50 bucks from the chief. <laughs> Where do you get this stuff, Amy? I always buy it by mail order. I better jot this down on the floor plans. It's interesting how dated this is. Like, mail order kind of isn't how you order things anymore. <laughs> I think that's everything we can get uh, sprayed. So, like, spray around a little bit more. Just waste Ema's valuable fluid that she gets by mail order. There we go. Uh, and now we're going to talk to Gumshoe here. So, Detective Gumshoe, your boss for the day? That's right. It's an honor. After all, the murder took place right here in the police department. But if you're boss, why are you all alone? Where are your underlings? They're using yesterday's findings prepared to prepare for tomorrow's trial. In other words, you go kick that investigation. Again. I'm adamant, though. I'm gonna take control and put this case to rest. In my own evidence locker, pal. Do you have a locker in here too, Detective Gumshoe? <laughs> of course! I am a detective after all. They gave me a locker that only I can open, pal. Only you can open? Always believe in Mr. Edgeworth, no matter what happens. So, Mr. Edgeworth is with the Inquiry Committee now, right? They're trying to figure out who's responsible for the mess up in court today. I see. I guess this is what you call fate. Mr. Edgeworth just can't get away from that case. That case? Yeah, that case. The SL9 incident, of course. That was the beginning of the end for Mr. Edgeworth. Maybe you can tell us more about the case? This place is more high-tech than you might think. Every locker is fixed so that only one detective can open it. Using their ID card? Well, that's the thing, pal. ID cards can be lost. 
Right, I'm on my third card and entering the force already. That sounds like a lot. Yeah, but even I can't lose my own right hand. Right hand? Oh, you mean your fingerprint. Exactly, how the lock for each locker is coated with a fingerprint. So the only locker we can open is our own. Oh my gosh. Look at that little photo there. On the locker. Oh, that's so cute. You don't know who that is yet, but that's really cute. You'll find out who that is later, and, it, and you realize it's really cute. <laughs> Same looking around. Funny, they look like normal lockers. These are the latest model. There's a trick to the handles, see? The handles? From the other side of the handles is a sensor. And if the wrong person touches it, zap, you get a shock. If that's what happened, my hand will be black and smoking every day. <laughs> In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. Evidence lock right to the court record. Okay, we want to know a bit more about SL9 if we can, so let's show Detect- Oh, we also want to know about the ID card record, so let's show him that too. Uh, here's the ID card record. Can you take a look at this? This is the ID card record of the people who came in here on the day of the stabbing. Ah, I heard the rumours. So it was Goodman who came in here at the time of the murder. Whoa! But what is it? That second number. It's not your ID number, is it, Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth. What? The second number in this list belongs to Mr. Edgeworth. But what? ID card record updated in the court record. Why would Edgeworth get from the evidence room? Well, I'm sure he had his reasons. <laughs> okay, um, so now we want to ask about this online incident as well. Detective Goodman's note, and that switchblade knife. I bet Edgeworth was the most surprised of anyone. Because of the SL9 connection? That was Mr. Edgeworth's first big case, you know, two years ago. That was the first time the world knew Edgeworth was a man to be feared. But why would evidence from that case turn up now? It's not over, pal. Maybe there are some loose ends left in that case. Can talk about it? Yes. Now that was a bloody violent case. Violent. So it was a murder? A serial killing. A serial killing. Maybe I don't want to get involved in this after all. But the killer made a mistake. Mr. Edgeworth built his case around that to nab him. And this was two years ago? Put Mr. Edgeworth right in the spotlight and started the rumor mill. Rumors about forged evidence? It was supposed to be all cleared up with the transfer cleaned up with the transfer all the other day. It was the last job he ever did. Detective Goodman, that is. Huh? What do you mean? Detective Goodman was the detective in charge of the SL9 incident, see. So, so, that switchblade knife? The victim took that knife out of the evidence locker himself? Hey pal, look at the time. Was there something you needed to be going to? Just that Mr. Edgeworth's inquiry committee should be letting out soon. I'm gonna go give him my report for the day. It might help, you know. Report? You mean the note written on the back of that flyer? The one that says, nothing but no problems? Hey, it's Mr. Edgeworth we're talking about. I'm sure he can use a report like this. I believe in him. You need enemies when you've got friends like Detective Gumshoe. I'm off, pal. Later. I should probably see what Edgeworth has to say, too. So, we do want to go talk to Edgeworth. Um, he can help us out with... So, with, uh... Investigating the crime scene a bit better, actually. Uh, if we can remember where he is. I think he's in the Criminal Affairs Department. No. Detention Center? No. Our office? Oh, no, he's in his office. That's right. I forgot. I forgot that we can go to his office. <laughs> February 23rd. High Prosecutor's Office. Room 1202. Ah, yes. It's my apologies. Oh, it's you. Have we met somewhere? 
Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, I beg your leave. So long. Is Edgeworth here? There, standing by the window, a teacup in his hand. Right. Has yeah, the hotel bring him tea service? Mr. Edgeworth, you're back from the district prosecutor's office inquiry? I am. And by the way, Detective Gumshoe was looking for you. Ah uh, yes, he brought me the latest information, it seems. Really? Was it helpful? Apparently a new French restaurant is opening near here. I think he was trying to console me somehow. Um, the real info is on the other side, Edgeworth. Poor Mr. Edgeworth, I think this whole thing is really taking a toll on him. So, how did the inquiry committee go? Actually, they decided to treat this not as a case of concealing evidence, but as a communications error during the investigation. Concealing evidence? Yes, apparently there are some who believe that I concealed evidence. They gave me a warning. You were lucky this time. Again. Again? I've heard them say that so many times. Ever since that case two years ago. Are you okay for the trial tomorrow? Well, I'm still the presiding prosecuting attorney. However, something happened? They gave control of the investigation over to the police department. The police department? Yes. Any further investigation of this case will be directed by the Chief of Police, Gant. I can do nothing but wait for its results. I see. Why, I ask you. Why? All along I've done only what I believe is right. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But still. Wow, I've never seen him this out of sorts. Okay, we do need some stuff from him, but I can't quite remember... I need to show him the ID card, maybe? Oh, right, I better check this now. As I was saying, I... What's this? A record of ID card usage? Edgeworth, you went to the evidence room that day, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Yes, that's true. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? Please don't look at me like that. I was asked to go. By Chief Gant, no less. Chief of Police? He wanted evidence for the case that wrapped up half a year ago. He told me he wanted me, wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. But it was solved, right? It would have to be if the evidence was already filed. The Chief is never one to explain himself. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Can I ask what kind of case it was? I can't say. It really has nothing to do with the current case. I'm curious about this other case. I better make a note of it. Unrelated evidence screwed over the court record. <laughs> Stubborn as always. I told you this has nothing to do with the current case. Okay, so we need that. Um, we need that screwdriver. Even though it has nothing to do with the current case. Uh, we also... I think we want to show him the luminol. Right, please. I'm the prosecutor on this case. You don't expect me to sit here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea. Pass on the tea, you just tell me about the case. Mr. Wright, Mr. Edgeworth just told you no in a very polite manner. Whose side are you on, anyway? Maybe if I just show him my best evidence, I can get some re reaction out of him. Um... Well, the, the Luminol wasn't the right choice, obviously. I know you. You probably got a hold of information already, right? What's to do with this case you were on? The SL9 incident? And some dark suspicion you were wrapped up in. You were the man who revived the worst memory of my life. I figured I'd be telling you about this sooner or later. You must be talking about his father's murder in that elevator. Okay, Edgeworth, why don't you tell me about it? Tell me the truth. Okay, so let's hear about the SL9 incident. 
Guess the line incident was a heinous serial killing case. The head of the investigation was the deputy chief of police at the time, Damon Gant. That lucky old coot was involved in the case two years ago too then. He was a top officer, and it was my first time working with him. I was nervous. Wow, you get nervous too, Mr. Edgeworth? What I want to know is why was the deputy chief of police on the investigation? In truth, they used slightly more extreme methods than normal. We were dealing with a vicious murderer. If I let him go, the blood would be on my hands. We won our guilty verdict, and the killer was executed. Wait, you didn't... Of course not. I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I will do anything in my power to win a trial. However, I do have a code, and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Ema, Chief Prosecutor wanted to know something. My sister? What? If you were still studying forensic science. Huh? Y yes of course! Why, just the day Mr. Wright and I were using this. Luminal testing fluid, hmm? Well then, you might have use for this. Aluminum powder for taking fingerprints. It's, it's aluminium. Uh, I, I know it says aluminum, but it's, it's, it's aluminium. <laughs> it's been chemically treated for better adhesion. For me? Are you sure? We are the enemy, you know. I have no say in today's investigation. Do as you will. Edgeworth, I'm really... No need to thank me. Here, take your powder and these fingerprint files for everyone involved. I, uh, thanks. How about giving these to Detective Gumshoe as well? Fingerprinting set and fingerprint file received. Well, let's get going. One last investigation. Right. I continue to remember seeing a suspicious handprint somewhere. Okay, so we want to go back to the police department so we can check out those handprints here in the evidence room. <laughs> February 23rd, evidence room, sector 3. Investigation turned up a suspicious handprint. Here, in this blood on the detective's, on the detective's evidence locker. Let's use the secret weapon we just borrowed. Right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger? Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. So let's choose the finger that will have left behind the clearest print. I really can't tell the difference at a glance. Quit procrastinating and choose a finger! <laughs> uh, this one? So, this was another thing that used the DS features. You, um... You tapped on the screen to place the fingerprinting powder, and then you blew into the microphone to clear away the excess powder and make the fingerprint visible. Um, so we'll see how it works in this version. Um, there's no microphone on this system, so they can't make it work that way. Okay, now it's time to check for prints. Let me show you how it's done. He was starting to get that sparkle in her eyes. First, we sprinkle the aluminum powder around. Huh? How do you do that? With the A button, see? Ah, it looks like they did the trick. The aluminum powder adheres completely to the print. Once the powder is well spread, just blow away the excess. Huh? How do I do that? With the X button. Exciting, I know. <laughs> okay, so yeah, in the, um, in the original version she actually said with your breath, because you were supposed to blow into the microphone. But you just pressed the X button in this version, apparently. <laughs> Imagine you're blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. She said that in the original, but, you know, you're pressing a button instead of actually blowing, so... See? Wow, that looks like fun. Might take some getting used to, though. It's fine, it won't go up your nose or anything. You just pour the powder on thick and blow away the extra. Those are the basics of fingerprinting, Mr. Wright. Except better give it a try. So, yeah, um... They've clearly adjusted this to work using a regular controller. Uh, the dialogue doesn't quite make sense when you're not using a microphone, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, you can just place it everywhere, and then... That's much easier than having to blow into the microphone a whole bunch. Aha! You did it! You found one! 
But it looks nothing like a fingerprint. Hmm, now that you mention it, I guess it doesn't. What does it mean? I think it means we're out of luck. Out of luck? The person who left this handprint must have worn gloves. Don't tell we've been wasting all our time here. Hey, calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. But it does seem a shame. While we're at it, why don't we look for other prints? Other prints? Looking at the locker door again closely. It seems like there are fingerprints outside the bloody handprint as well. Let's see if we can find a clear print. Hmm, fingerprints outside the blood. Well, there's one over here. Yeah, this is a lot less um, tactile than the original version of the fingerprinting. Much easier to do though. Surely that's enough. Looks pretty clear to me. Yay, a print so clear it's dazzling. D dazzling? Anyway, this print took a lot of effort to find. Let's match it up right away. So we're not done yet? This is quite a process. Well, there's no point in finding a fingerprint and not knowing who the owner is, right? I guess she's right. Look at the fingerprint data we got from Mr. Edgeworth and point out the person you think left these prints. Huh? How am I supposed to know who it was? I can make a pretty good guess. The, the bloody handprint and the fingerprints are in different places, right? That means the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. So whose fingerprints will we most likely find on this evidence locker? Um, so... Yeah, you, can, you just sort of scroll through the logs that for everyone involved in the case and you can see that their prints resemble or don't resemble. You can just like actually press X to compare, but you can also just look for the one that matches the best and once you've found it, go ahead. So that part's pretty much the same as it was in the original version. Aha! So these prints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You gave me this so what look. I guess that's probably because I was thinking so what. Okay, so it can't be nothing this time, but there's always next time. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. You gotta roll with the punches, Mr. Wright. Thanks for the sympathy. Wait, if I remember correctly, there was one other handprint in this room. Let's check it out. The handprint is actually over here. It's invisible. This is where we got a luminal fluid reaction, right? Right, there was a handprint here. Okay, wanna try using this? There go our eyes sparkling again. Okay, let's check the prints. That's the spirit. Oh, uh, but I have to warn you about something first. What? The area with the blood was wiped away, right? We only, we only ended up finding it using chemical means. Any prints in that area will have been wiped away too. Oh, right. So that means no prints. Would you say the probability of your, of your hypothesis is high? Don't ask me. <laughs> anyway. You must try to find prints that weren't wiped away. Prints other than the ones left by the bloody hand. So the useful thing here is the blood, the only three fingers were actually part of the bloody part. So if we come over here, where the other finger would have been, we can start dusting away and get some prints. Yeah, I'm just mashing the A button basically, and then just press and hold X, there we go. Okay, so this print, uh, we gotta figure out who this matches. Hmm. <gasps> Match found. Hey, these fingerprints, they... Whose are they? Whose? Is it someone I know? Officer Marshall? Huh? Officer Jake Marshall? 
Marshall's fingerprints added to the court record. That's got to be coincidence. He's not involved in the crime. Emma. This is decidedly different from Detective Gumshoe's prints. The luminal reaction. The blood and the fingerprints are in the same place. Oh, oh! So we have Jake Marshall's fingerprints. On a wiped blood stain. But why would Officer Marshall. Looks like my investigation is finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you call decisive evidence. I. I don't believe it! Phoenix, chill. Emma's clearly upset. Like, can you stop being so enthusiastic? Oh. <laughs> okay, that's the end of that investigation. That was a long video. Um, moving on to day three trial shortly. Um, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, day three trial. Yay!